Um, I'm going to be talking about the royal priesthood and the holy nation today. This used to well, when we started off uh, producing this, this was actually, this was actually uh, going to be one part, meaning one podcast. Um, but what happened was it actually turned into two. Um, the way that that camp came about was, um, I remember one day after a, a church service, um, and, and by the way, one of my habits, one of the things I actually like to do is ask people for their feedback. And um, if anyone disagrees with what I'm saying, I encourage them to just let me know. Be plain, be simple, be open, transparent, and just let me know. Um, I believe in that way of uh, working. And so what happened was the, uh, the gentleman actually did just that. And uh, I remember initially when he challenged me on, on uh, my conclusion, and I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second. Um, I initially felt, uh, well, you know, as you tend to, hopefully not all the time, but anyway, I, I felt a little bit th thrown off. Well, let me just tell you what the challenge was. Well, I basically said that the uh, royal priesthood was um, it was the believers. So any any modern day believer, any believer after Yeshua uh, Jesus had ascended and he gave the great commission to go into the world and preach the gospel. Um, the the anyone who joined uh, the the sheepfold, the body of Christ. Uh, had the right to be a priest. Now, um, or part of that uh, royal priesthood and holy nation. And he said, no, that's, that's just for the Jews. And so what happened then, I said, well, look, just for his sake, why don't I go back and study? And that's exactly what I did. And it took me months. I was supposed to have released this, uh, this talk ages ago. Well, here we are. So I've done it now. I really hope you enjoy it. May God be with you all. May God bless us. May the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob grant you faith and understanding in Jesus' name. Let's go right into it. So a royal priesthood, a holy nation, this is the topic. Part one of two. To begin with, the typical views of who the elect are circulate within two main groups. Uh, you got, have those who believe that the Jews, that they are Jews only, and I've already spoken about one person who believes that, the person who challenged me. And um, there are actually texts to support that view, and those who believe that the elect are the church only. And uh, that was kind of my view, but look, <clears throat> within those circles... Uh, some may say that the elect is anyone. And these are some of the views, actually, that if you look into it, you, you, you'll find these views popping up. The elect is anyone chosen to do either good or bad. And we're talking about someone like Pharaoh. As some conclude that uh, because he was chosen uh, as somebody who... God would use to glorify himself or show his glory, make his glory known, um, that he was, uh, they will conclude that he was uh, elect in that sense. It, it, it does have some, I can see why they would come to that conclusion, but whenever, you know, whenever uh, God calls someone the his elect, that person, one of the things that you'll find is that that person, although those people, that people, always have a covenantal bond with God. And the, the Lord, Yahweh, um, Jehovah, never, ever, ever called Pharaoh his elect. The last few to highlight before moving on is that the uh, there are some who believe that the elect are only the 12 tribes of Israel. So we're, we've moved from it not being the church, to not being just Jews, to only being the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, the reason for addressing this topic is because uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, is actually written to the elect 
to the elect of the diaspora or diaspora however you want to pronounce it doesn't matter um we're talking about the scattered population um israel then uh were known to be uh was historically they were scattered amongst nations because of sin and so first peter chapter one is written to them those of the diaspora to the elect it's in the opening uh statement of the letter and so you can read about that in first peter chapter one but then later on in chapter two verse nine the writer states you are a royal priesthood um from exodus 19 6 so it is this amongst other arguments that is used uh, really to support a jew only priesthood what does the bible say on this matter um, well my assertion is this the royal priesthood is members of the apostolic church and this includes but is not limited to jews it includes but is not limited to just the 12 tribes of israel um and here's the thing what if you have someone from the 12 tribe of israel who has rejected god completely rejected god what then would you still say that they are god's elect it doesn't mean that everyone in the church will function in the priesthood in the priestly capacity uh, some will be ignorant of what it means to be a priest and others will be unable to for various reasons and then still there will be others who would choose not to function in that capacity anyway there's something I want you to consider. Consider this, that the early church within, say, 100 years of the Messiah's ascension had mainly a Jewish congregation. Uh, that's quite important because it's okay then to believe or to accept the claim that First Peter was written to a Jewish congregation. At that time, I wouldn't expect anyone else or non-Jewish believers or followers of Yeshua to be in that congregation and therefore just because first Peter addresses uh, the Jews it doesn't limit his message to the Jews one truth can be for multiple people eklegomai is the Greek word for the elect this is not a term solely reserved for Israel or original Jews as some may attest Let's look at Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. Uh, here is what it says. But many are called, many are called, sorry, but few are elected. You see the English word chosen. Uh, actually, it's the word elected in the Greek. Right off the back there, uh, if you were to be sincere about the context of this, right off the back, you can see a hint. And I'll ask this question. How many are called by God? My question is, how many are called? Now, of course, you don't know full, uh, the exact number. But look at it this way. Thousands daily are called by God. And then I will ask, how many respond to that calling? It's impressed on us. After viewing it this way, to understand this to be speaking of the church-wide inclusive election many are called but few in comparison respond to that calling and that few that do respond are called the elect in matthew 22 14 many are called but few are elected it's the church worldwide inclusive election and we'll see as i prove it this is a very large mixed group. Now, let's pay attention to some Old Testament principles of a more diverse priesthood. Exodus twelve forty eight to 49. Um, let's start from here um, and go through a few passages. Uh, maybe you want to get out of the book and follow me along here because it's always good to prove what I am uh, claiming. Now, it says in Exodus 20, 12, 48 to 49, And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, 
and will keep the Passover to the Lord. Let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. And then 49 says, uh, One law shall be for him that is homeborn, and to the stranger that sojourneth among you. Where the Lord uh, declares that you are a royal priesthood and a holy nation, who was he speaking to? Was he speaking to just the Jews? Or was he including everyone that is in that sheepfold, that family that God had created? I'm going to show you some more very, very compelling uh, scriptures to solidify this point. But let me just mention, uh, you can read in Numbers chapter 9, 14, and Numbers 15, 14 to 15. So that's Numbers chapter 15, 14 to 15. Uh, and, and basically the same theme is repeated. Let's go on to Leviticus 17, 8 to 9. Here is what it reads. Whatsoever man there be out of the house of Israel or of the strangers which sojourn among you, uh, that offereth the burnt offering or sacrifice, and bringeth it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, to offer it unto the Lord, even that man shall be cut off from among his people. Now here's my point. From that passage, we can conclude, if you're not part of Israel, you can't be cut off. If you're not part of Israel already, how can you be cut off? And in fact, we'll see where he names everyone Israel. Uh, and, and in that group, we'll see uh, pockets of different people from different backgrounds as well. But again, to say that it's just the 12 tribes of Israel um, or that it's just limited, the, the royal priesthood is just limited to Jews, really does not fit the biblical narrative or the principles. Let's look at some more texts. Um, stay with me here. I know there's a few to go through, but this is quite fascinating. Look at Deuteronomy uh, 16, 13 to 14. Deuteronomy 16, verse 13 to 14. Thou shalt observe the feast of the tabernacles seven days, after that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine, and thou shalt rejoice in the feast, thou, thy son, thy daughter, and thy manservant, and thy maidservant, and the Levite, the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, that are within thy gates. Here is an example where, where God is just building this wonderful family. And it fascinates me how right from the beginning, he did not start uh, uh, by, he didn't start by singling out a race of people. He started off, he started off building a family. And this family is echoed in the family that Jesus came to build as well. It's continued by Jesus, actually. To them who believed on his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. That adoption happened right from the beginning. Praise God. Okay, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28 to 29. Here is what it says. There is neither Jew or Greek, nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And here's to the pro according to the promise. Those New Testament guys, they believed it. They knew it. They saw it in the same light. For them, there wasn't this separation that some took hold of. Um, I have a couple more passages to go through. Uh, so let's look at Ezekiel 47, 22 to 23. Ezekiel 47, 22 to 23. And it shall come to pass that you shall divide it. Speaking of the land, the promised land, you shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you. Pay attention to this, please, guys. I love this passage. And to the stranger that sojourn among you. Once again, I'll, I'll read from the top. And it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot for an inheritance among you and to the stranger that sojourns among you. And it shall come to pass 
that you shall divide it by lot for an inheritance among you and to the stranger that sojourn among you, which shall beget children among you, and they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel. They shall have an inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that in the tribe the stranger sojourneth, there shall ye give him his inheritance, saith the Lord. So you tell me, by the time uh, Yeshua came, or let's just say the early church in general, if you were to say to someone, or, or let's just say that you were to call a crowd of Israelites, of Jews, and you were to say, hands up who is from the tribe of Benjamin. Or hands up who uh, those who are from the tribe of Judah. What you would see is just a bunch of people throwing up their hands. Um, what you wouldn't see is people saying, hang on a minute, my, uh, great, 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 great ancestor, um, my great, 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 great father actually wasn't an original Jew. No, th the point I'm making here is that in God's eyes, when he established Israel, when he established uh, Israel in the promised land and told them to divide up the land, what he had in mind was this family that he had created, not a race. And um, again, with the, this idea of who the children of the promise are, as we will see, relates to those who the promise was given to, not who they, who they were uh, born from. In other words, their lineage doesn't, doesn't decide their election. It's the promise that decides the election. Okay, in Romans chapter 2, uh, Paul says a very interesting thing. He says, For it is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. In other words, a person may want to identify as, may identify as a Jew uh, through through lineage, through birth, through blood, you know, etc. But what the point that is made here is that that counts for nothing if you're not a Jew inwardly. So let's just look at Romans 9 quickly. Um, I did make a point earlier, and I just want to read the scripture uh, that supports it. Um, here's what Romans 9 says in verse 8. It is not the children by physical descent who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this was how the promise was stated. At the appointed time I will return, and Sarah will have a son. Not only that, but Rebekah's children were conceived at the same time by our father Isaac. Yet, before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad in order that God's promise in election might stand, not by works but by him who calls, she was told the older will serve the younger, just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. Let me not address the part where it says Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated, because that's just not the topic. I could go into that, but let's ignore that for now and focus on the, the, the point that the promise and the election of God go hand in hand. The point, uh, sorry, the promise and the election. Uh, one doesn't come without the other. Very important point. Uh, the promise that comes with the election today is seen in Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 38 to 39 where it reads, uh, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all that are far, that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Here's some points for you. You are the elect if God has invited you into covenant with him. And if that is the case, then 1 Peter 2.9 applies to you. Secondly, 
Galatians 4.28 confirms this. Uh, Paul being a Jew writing to Gentiles says, we are children of the promise. And like I said, the promise and the election go hand in hand. Now, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6 says, uh, makes a point that the Galatians should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise. The Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise. The promise, understanding the promises is essential to understanding who the elect are. One doesn't come without the other. Praise God. By the way, you might pick up some noise in the background. It's, it's just rain. Uh, please do not get distracted by that. Glory be to God. Okay, so we have about six slides left. So hang in there and then you can actually have a break and maybe tune in to the uh, second part, which will deal with the actual priesthood itself. I had to get this one out of the way. So referring back to Matthew 22, then once again, the elect are from those who are called by God. Very, very important point. Uh, secondly, Deuteronomy 16, 13 to 14, and Deuteronomy 31, 11 to 12, um, and Galatians 3, 28 to 29, and then lastly, Ezekiel 47, 22 to 23, show that God established a diverse people named Israel. A diverse people named Israel. Jews, therefore, were never a race but a people. Now, uh, third point in summary. First Peter was written to a people of the old promise or covenant. They were mixed, they were a mixed people and not the biological descendants of one of the sons of Jacob. Fourth point, Romans 2, uh, 25 to 29. Um, makes the point that the true Jews or the true Jew is the the Jew inwardly and is circumcised in the heart. Point number five, the promise and the election of God go hand in hand. The promise that comes with the election today is seen in the book of Acts. Acts chapter two, verse 38, that is. Three more points. If you are Abraham's seed, then you are of the family of God and belong to Israel, not ethnic, not ethnic Israel, that is, uh, God's people. Uh, the same adoption offered to Israel is the same adoption offered to everyone else. It's the same family. That is why there is no Jew or Gentile in Galatians 3.28. Okay, uh, last three slides. I want to make some, um, want to look at some apocalyptic uh, scriptures uh, that deal with the elect. Matthew twenty four thirty to 31 speaks about the sound of a trumpet and the catching up of the elect. Uh, the same references are in 1 Corinthians 15, 52 and 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. These passages speak of those in Christ. I don't think anyone can doubt that. These passages speak of those who are in Christ. Now, 1 Corinthians mentioned the dead and that we shall be changed. Of course, this is relating to both Jews and Gentiles. Uh, the people dead at the coming of Christ are called the elect. And that's very, very important to understand. Now, I want to make something clear. Now, maybe I should have said this in the beginning. But I'm not trying to do away with Israel. This is not replacement theology. Finally, I just want to, to, to round this up. I mean, look. If you've ever heard the teaching that the elect are a race of people, it's just not biblical. It doesn't exist anywhere in the Bible. It's not in the uh, uh, thinking of God. Um, and that's wonderful to know. You can read passages like Isaiah 56, which has a beautiful, beautiful um, way of, of uh, addressing the um, non-Jews. Um, it's wonderful. I love Isaiah 56, the whole passage, if you read that, that gives you a different perspective on the whole matter. But glory be to God, uh, this is the first part over. Please tune in to the second part and, you know, post comments, 
um, don't forget to subscribe and of course share with people who you believe will benefit from this message thank you